Hi, I'm Joseph Patrick Daniels, and today I'm going to show you a technique to drawing and shading lips. If you found this video on YouTube, this exercise is part of a larger course I teach on traditional drawing that I've created for beginners, how to draw from beginner to master. It's available online on demand, so if you'd like to watch a preview of the course, just click the link below and it will take you to my site. For this exercise, you're going to need light, medium, dark, and white charcoal pencils, a tordion, a blending stick, and a kneaded eraser. You'll also need a pencil and a detail eraser. For those of you watching this video on YouTube, for a full list of supplies, please visit my course. You can watch the supply list for free. Just click the link below this video. For those of you who are in the middle of my course and taking a detour for the bonus exercises, welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to show you an easy, classical approach to drawing mouse. For this exercise, we'll begin working from a printed photo reference. So before you start, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you can go to www.beginnertomaster.com and download the reference photos from my site for free. If you're watching this on Udemy or the Beginner to Master Art Academy website, then just download the file Lips Reference from the course curriculum. One last thing before we begin. The best approach to this demonstration is to watch me draw a line or shade an area, then pause the video and repeat what I did. You will have to have some faith that the drawing is going to turn out well, but that's why I'm showing you the final outcome right now. First, although this is a charcoal drawing exercise, I suggest using a regular graphite pencil for the initial stage of the drawing, especially for the angle estimates you take, because it's easier to erase than charcoal, and you'll have to remove those external lines when you're done. Now, for those of you who are currently about midway through my course, we're going to do this exercise a little differently. I'm going to show you how to adapt what you've learned during the course so far, using the measurement technique, to drawing without it, and how to use this system to begin relying on just your ability to estimate angles and distances. Of course, you'll be able to take measurements at any point if you find yourself stuck or want to double check any lines you drew. And I strongly urge you to double check your lines as you progress. So have a ruler handy. If you're a purist and don't want to use a graphite pencil, make sure you're using the lightest charcoal you have and drawing the lightest lines you possibly can. Remember, the further back you hold your pencil, the more pressure control you have. Okay, let's get started. The first step is to place your subject matter. Now, because this is an exercise, you need to be able to double check your lines using the measurement technique. And in order to do that, this first line needs to be placed perfectly. Otherwise, every other line you draw after this one will be slightly off. So, just for this line, I suggest everyone take a measurement for the far left corner of the mouth. What I'm looking for here is the distance in from the side of the paper and down from the top to give me a coordinate for the corner of the mouth. A few things I want you to try though. We're going to start by boxing out the lips. So make sure that line is vertical. To help you, simply compare it to the edge of the paper. Then draw a second vertical line for the right corner of the mouth. And draw those two lines on either sides of the mouth right onto your photo reference. Then take an estimate of the distance between them by holding your pencil up to the lines and using the pencil pinching technique. And it's about this distance. So now I know the overall size of the lips and exactly where they're placed on my drawing. And draw those lines on your paper. Again, I think it's a great idea to take a measurement using your ruler to see if your estimate is close enough, especially for those of you who haven't had any training using estimates yet. Again, if you found me on YouTube, this exercise is part of a larger course, so there may be some terminologies I use during the lectures that won't make sense to you. If you'd like to learn more, just go to my website and enroll in my course, Charcoal Drawing from Beginner to Master. Okay, now that I have the size determined, I want to estimate the angle of the line separating the top lip from the bottom. That's often two angles. I can see the first one is almost perfectly horizontal by comparing it to the top of the paper. To draw this line, hold your pencil up to the reference and get an estimate of its angle. Don't worry about the length yet. 
The next estimate I need is one for the second angle of the lips. They should meet in the center. And if you estimate their angles correctly, where they intersect is the center. And that four-step process gives you the angle of the mouth you're drawing. Next, I need an angle for the top lip. I know it stretches from the left to the right corners of the mouth, coordinates I've already established. I'll use my pencil and take a visual estimate of this angle. Remember, every drawing begins with straight lines. Take estimates to where these two peaks at the top of the lip happen and give yourself a mark for each one. Next, look for this arrow shape and think about how much information you now have to draw these two lines perfectly. They're pointing exactly at the center line so you know where the middle of the arrow is. Now all you have to do is connect the dots. Take a visual estimate of the angle of each line. Take a measurement of the distance between them if it helps as well. For those of you who haven't taken my course, the measurement technique I'm talking about is one designed to speed up the time it takes to train your eye to get better at estimating angles and distances. And estimating angles and distances is all line art is really made up of. It's part of one of the fundamental exercises we do in the course. This is a classical technique. Have you ever wondered why, when you look at, for example, Leonardo da Vinci's drawings, or you see a masterfully structured drawing, there are often those mysterious lines drawn around it, as if some kind of measurement system was used. But most people think, I'll never learn that, it's too advanced for me. Well, this is it, and it's actually not that complex. You just saw a small example of how it works for the first time. So, of course, it seems a bit daunting, but I'm going to repeat these steps to you over and over again until they stick. And once you understand it, you're going to see that it's just logical. What I'm showing you in this tutorial is a simple breakdown you can use on any structure by first determining the size of your subject, then breaking it into simple intersecting angles using only straight lines. Next, estimate this distance then the angle of the outermost line of the bottom lip. And I just want the angle of the lip, not the angle of the cast shadow beneath it. But notice you already have this angle in your drawing. See how it lines up with the angle of the top lip we drew a moment ago? So once you've taken the estimate of this distance, all you have to do is draw a line that's parallel to the one on the top lip. This is the logic I was talking about. You can find this type of symmetry in every image. It takes a little practice to get good at, and it's going to take some more explaining on my end. So don't worry, this is just an introduction. So let's take a measurement using the pencil pinching technique. Again, I'm starting in the middle of the lips. I know it's the middle because it's literally below this giant arrow the top lip makes pointing directly at center. Next, I'm going to draw in this large crack in the center of the bottom lip. But notice, this crack isn't directly below the big arrow. It's actually slightly to the left. Look where it lands in relation to the center when I draw these perimeter lines along the angles. The next angle you'll need to draw is this one along the side of the lip. Now, this area can be a little confusing because of the shadow. It can be difficult to tell where the lip begins and ends. So again, draw a line right on your photo reference to help you keep track of where it is. This darker spot is a shadow, not the edge of the lip, so be careful not to confuse the two. And just a quick observation. Notice these lines don't intersect right at the corner of the mouth. They don't meet until a little further back over here. That's because the corner of the mouth doesn't come to a sharp point. It's rounded. With that in, I'll look around the image for more angles that line up. But now I want to include the cross sections of my lines in my search. Here's what I mean. These are the lines I have so far. Notice this line in the middle of that triangle on the top lip lines up with this intersection of lines on the bottom lip. So now, when I draw this line, it should create this triangle with the other angles I created.
Next, I'll draw a line in for the bottom angle of the shadow, which should go here, and be almost perfectly parallel to the line of the bottom of the lips. I'll quickly draw this angle in. It should start at the corner of the mouth and should intersect with the line that goes across the lips at exactly this point. Now, when I draw this line, I should see this exact same size and shape triangle in my drawing. This shows me that the line I just placed at the bottom of the lips is accurate. Again, I know this seems complicated right now. Don't worry, it will become clearer. I don't expect anyone to have mastered this yet. Remember, you're only hearing this for the first time, but I bet your brain is already starting to find a pattern. Just follow the steps one at a time and listen to my explanations. I'm going to repeat everything I do for each set of lips. In fact, before we move forward, just by looking at the lines I've drawn so far, can you guess which lines I'm going to draw next? Do you see the two missing lines from the basic framework I've built? All I did to create that is use simple logic. Every line interacts with another line in a person's features because of our natural symmetry. You just need to be taught how to look for those intersecting lines. Doing this is going to make you develop your abilities of visualization and put them into overdrive. And this technique doesn't just work for people, as you'll learn later in the course. It works for drawing literally anything your heart desires. So, as most of you guessed, the next line I'm going to draw is this one along the outside of the lips. To get this angle, I'll start by taking an estimate of how far it is in from the corner of the mouth. The line I'm drawing on my photo reference is what I would normally just visualize in my mind. I'm going to extend the line so I can see where it intersects with the other perimeter lines I drew earlier. Then I'll take an estimate of its angle using my pencil and transfer that angle to my drawing. And if you want to double check if you got that angle right, you should see a triangle right here that's about this size. Looking for the triangles in the negative space is the best way to see if the angles you estimated were correct. This is a powerful tool used in traditional drawing. A lot of what I'm showing you is what goes on in the mind of an artist as they're drawing. When you see an artist's finished work, these lines are normally erased, so you don't get to see how the real structuring happens in their process. So, now that I have all of these lines in, I can check my work by looking for those shapes in my drawing. For example, see how these two lines intersect? Now I'll add the angle of the top lip and compare it to my drawing. The triangle in my drawing is too big. Do you see it? So what that tells me is that my top line has to come down a bit. Now I can easily erase and fix my mistake during the most basic structural step of my drawing. There are always mistakes in drawings. Every artist, no matter their skill level, makes them. The difference is when they make them. This is exactly the ideal time to make mistakes. Not when you're shading or already finished with the drawing, while you're building the basic framework. So let's look at what we've drawn so far. Your framework should be drawn using only straight lines, exclude any gradients, and the only shadow that can be included is the main cast shadow or none at all. And again, if you had trouble placing any of these lines, be sure to use the measurement technique to double check them as you progress. Now that all the straight lines are in, I can begin bringing in the curves to the lips, which you'll find are very minimal compared to what's already here. I can use this mark showing me where the middle of the bottom lip is to help me place the curvature of the line between the lips. The top lip curves up here. All I'm doing here is using the lines I drew to help me see where a curve should be instead of an angle. It's that simple. There's a subtle curvature to the top of that V shape along the top of the lip. I'll define the shape of the shadow next. As usual, I'm working from the outline inward. Again, I'm not drawing the gradient here, I just want the core shadow shape for now. 
The lip cuts across here. You should have a measurement for that. Then the line goes up here. See how it makes a triangle shape? Those triangle shapes are incredibly helpful landmarks. Now I can estimate this angle using the information I already have, which is quite a bit. And that gives me the basic shape and placement of the cast shadow. Next, if you follow this line you drew for the side of the lip down to this intersecting line, you'll know where to start drawing the angle for the top of the shadow. Once that's in, I'll add some curvature to the bottom of the lip. There's another curve here. You have to estimate these curves by eye, but you should be fine as long as you stay inside the perimeter lines you drew. This line curves out a bit, then comes in right here. This is almost another angle you have to estimate. Look for how these lines run parallel. I'll keep looking around. I see the top lip has a curve right here that comes down below the perimeter line. I'm beginning to see some nice structure. Next, I'll start looking for more subtle shapes. For example, follow the middle line of the lip across looking for any smaller dips or curves. It comes down a bit here, and there's a slight arch to the right side. Great, now I'll erase my original lines. I'll darken this crease between the lips I drew earlier. I'm going to need it moving forward. Now you can get rid of any old structural lines you see, like this one. What this system does is help you create a framework that guarantees the lips you draw are both proportionate and at the exact right perspective. There is no exact formula for drawing lips because all lips are different shapes and sizes. Your subject matter could be looking at you from an infinite possible number of angles. And more importantly, they could be making any number of expressions with their mouth. But, as you know from the fundamental exercises in the course, all line art is made up of is angles and distances. So, the best system to use is one based on how those angles and distances interact. That's image logic. Finally, you can erase the perimeter lines you drew, and you should be left with a basic line art outline of the lips, along with their core shadow. Once that's erased, step back and compare your drawing to the photo reference to see if the angles and curves match. Then make any changes necessary. There's always at least one. This curve in my drawing could use a little work. Again, step back and observe. I can't stress the importance of getting into this habit. Remember, the drawing process includes making mistakes as part of the path to getting accurate results. No one, not me or any master craftsman who has ever lived, gets perfect drawings on the first try. Here's a quick excerpt from my drawing course where we discuss the importance of using mistakes to your advantage.
Take this angle, for example. I think it's too high up to the right, and the angle isn't vertical enough. Notice I'm erasing my mistake, but not completely. This way, I can see the line that's too high up to the right, and not at enough of a vertical angle, as I put it. And draw one that's further down, and at a more vertical angle, compared to the original. I might not get it perfect, but I'll be one step closer. Here's what my eye is doing when I stand back a few feet and compare the two images. I take one angle at a time and compare it to the reference. I'm also comparing distances to see if they match, one shape at a time. This distance appears to be a bit high, so now I'm looking at the line across the top, and I think that should be lower. So I'll bring it down a touch and erase my original line. Again, I've left these corrections in the edit because I want you to see them. I want every person who takes this course to see that it's a natural part of the process. Don't beat yourself up when you make a mistake. Use it to your advantage. That's what every classical master has done throughout history. If I wasn't showing you this part of the process because it doesn't feel good to my ego to make mistakes, I would be cheating you out of seeing some of the most important steps in the drawing process. Finding mistakes, then using them to make adjustments to your line art before shading is as important to getting good drawings as any other step along the way. Once I'm happy with my drawing, I'll clean up my lines as best I can. I don't want any sketchy lines. Remember, line art is like a map to show you where to shade. So, the simpler the map, the easier it will be to read. Next, I want to reduce how dark my lines are, because this is going to be a charcoal drawing. So, I'm going to draw and shade over all of this with charcoal, and I don't want any graphite showing. To do that, simply dab at them with a kneaded eraser. Now that my line art is complete, I can begin the shading stages. I'll start using a light charcoal and begin outlining the planes, then adding simple tones to them. Remember, always work from the outline inward. So the next step is to outline the interior shapes. So outline the shadows like a relief map. Take this plane for example. See how this shadow cuts across the top lip? That's the edge of a plane, so define it. If you'd like to learn more about planes, including how to see them and manage them and use them to bring your drawings up to a professional level, please visit my course on Udemy. It's just too much information to include in this YouTube video. If you'd like a coupon for it, you can email me at josephpatrickdaniels at gmail.com or leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Back to the exercise. The planes of the top lip can often be broken up into an X shape, depending on the lighting. So this is one plane, and this is another. In this case, the light is illuminating this plane perfectly, but only catching the top of this plane, leaving the rest in shadow. So I'll outline that shadow shape, or light shape, depending on how you look at it. Then I can lightly outline the rest of the lip. Notice how far back I'm holding my pencil. Doing this gives me maximum pressure control, and you should be drawing as lightly as you can for this step. Once the shapes of the shadows are defined, I'll begin filling them in with some very basic values. You don't need to match them to the 10 value grayscale perfectly yet, just get some general tones. Remember, the outlines you draw shouldn't be darker than the values in the shapes they're surrounding. Once it's shaded in, it should appear as if there's no outline at all because, as I explained earlier, there are no outlines in nature. Next, I'll fill in the darker shape, but don't go too dark all at once. You want to build up to 10th value, so begin with a medium charcoal and only add medium pressure. If you look closely, you'll find that the top outline of the lips isn't a very defined line. It's naturally a soft transition, so you don't need to create a hard line there. That's enough for now. I just need the basic shapes of the planes to be shaded in for this stage. 
I don't want this built up to the darkest value, and I don't want any detail. Don't even soften your blends yet. This is just the preliminary shading stage. Now I'll switch to a dark charcoal, and notice if you look closely, you can see that this side of the top lip gets much darker. If you look closely again, you'll see that there's actually no blend. The shadow follows the shape of the cracks in the lip. Although that looks like a gradient, it's actually just a series of short lines coming up from the shadow. So do your best to draw those in. You don't have to match them exactly, just get a sense for them in your drawing. And when you get to the side of the mouth, notice this line gets a bit lighter. So switch to a medium charcoal. It's not always necessary to switch charcoals for something this subtle, but I wanted to make sure the concepts of using different value charcoals to get a better range of tones in your drawings in this demonstration sticks. Now I can bring this side up to 10th value. So what you're seeing here is a simple breakdown of the planes I'm seeing in the top lip. That's all the preliminary shading step is, defining the various planes of a shape and assigning them values. So this dark charcoal won't be used again until I get down to the cast shadow. Okay, this video is getting too long, so I've broken it up into two parts. So please jump to the next video, Drawing the Lips Part 2, for the second half of this exercise, where I finish walking you through the shading stages.